Hey everybody, I want to talk about a product and platform that I absolutely love and our latest sponsor, Interseller, the prospecting and outreach platform of choice for recruiters and sellers. Whether you're doubling down on business development or recruiting talent, Interseller does all the heavy lifting of finding contact data, automating the email and follow-up process, and syncs all that rich data into 20-plus CRM and ATS platforms. Reach out now and get going on a two-week free trial and let them know you heard about it from Adam on the podcast today. Check out the link on the website. Appreciate it. Welcome to the podcast, where we introduce you to incredible humans who share their journeys with the mission to inspire you to harness your own inner tenacity to drive your life and career forward. And now, your host, Adam Posner. All right, all right, all right. Well, let's get the party started here, everybody. Welcome to the World Stepping Summit brought to you by Candidately. I am your host, Adam Posner. I am the founder of NHP Talent Group, a New York City-based consultancy focused on all things recruiting for Web 2 across marketing, media, and advertising. I'm also the founder of Probably Nothing Talent, a Web 3 talent consultancy, and the host of the podcast, Top Global Career Podcast, where I unpack my guest's career journey to help you harness your own inner tenacity and drive your life and career forward. I'm thrilled to welcome my panel today. The topic, the power of content marketing in recruitment. And I'd like to welcome my guests, Jeanette Harvey, Marcus Sawyer, Scott McGregor, and the Joel Lalji, all experts within the field of talent acquisition. So we're going to get this started. And normally I start with ladies first, but Jeanette's going with some technical difficulties. Uh, we're going to wait a moment for her to log in. And we're going to go left to right on your screen. Mr. Marcus Sawyer, welcome. Thanks for having me. Great to be here and uh, good to connect with you all. Good stuff. Quick high-level intro. Tell us who you are and what you do, my man. So who I am, I'm a person, human being. I spend the majority of my time in California, Oakland. I'm from London. I've been in the staff and recruiting space for the last 18 years. I led digital transformation for the ADECO group, buying, building, and investing in HR tech companies. And I run an organization now called EQ Community which is focused on building community for staffing and recruiting companies and large employers to help them engage with their candidates and also get new clients. Awesome. Good stuff, Mr. Joel Algy. Good to see you again for the hundredth time. Always good to see you. Um, so my name's Joel Algy. I work for a company called Hirewell. We are a Chicago-based uh, staffing agency, kind of HR tech company as well uh, with some recent acquisitions. And I work closely with our CRO, uh, really just on everything business development, everything content marketing for the agency, and uh, happy to be here. Awesome. Good stuff. The legend, the GOAT, Scott McGregor. Good to see you, man. What's up, guys? Great to be here. Uh, Scott McGregor. I'm the founder and CEO of Something New, uh, which I started eight years ago. Uh, found out at nine o'clock this morning. Uh, that we won our eighth straight uh, American Business Award for Innovation. Congrats. Uh, pretty cool, eight for eight. Um, I'm also the founder uh, and CEO of a community called The Outlier Project and a four-time author of a book series called The Standing O Series, which is all for our charity. Uh, so great to be here. Thanks, guys. Fantastic. And when Jeanette joins us, we will uh, get her introduction in there. She's having some technical difficulties. Scott, have you heard from her? Yeah, she uh, said she can't get off. She's on, but can't get off uh, unmute and camera won't load. All right. Tell her, just text her and ask her if she could just um, click out of the of the screen and restart it. Okay. Okay, cool. Let's get started here, everybody. Um, I think it's really important to define what well, there she is. Let's let's pause for a second. Here we go. Timing is everything here. <laughs> and last but not least, uh, fashionably Ms. late. Ms. Fashionably I, late. I really I actually was the first person to log on just as an FYI. Yes, she was, she was I like to make I like to make an entrance. So um, <laughs> thanks Didn't... for having me. Um, I'm Jeanette. I've spent the last 17 years in recruitment, uh, founder of Harper & Gray, which is a diversity recruitment company, and co-founder of Blockhouse, which is a specialist within the blockchain ecosystem. Awesome. 
Good stuff. And I think it's important before we get started to really understand what content marketing means from each one of our perspectives. For example, I'm, I'm an in the trenches recruiter. Scott does a little bit net now. Joel has different efforts. Jeanette has different uh, KPIs and targets. And Marcus comes at it from a little bit different angle. So I think it's important for each of us to really just quickly define what content marketing means in the realm of what we do from a day-to-day -day perspective. And I'm going to start with ladies first, Jeanette. Um, yeah, so f for me, kind of really building a, uh, a brand across two different areas. Um, for the first thing for me is about, uh, you know, content marketing is about um, developing and, and being part of a community. So it's really defining who that community is and how you intend to really add value. And I think that's the, the key to, to really having an engaged community and being part of an engaged community is thinking about giving far more than you are taking. And I think that has a, a knock on impact to any commercial objectives that you may have. And, and Jeanette, but let's talk about commercial objectives for a quick second there. What are those, those hard goals or KPIs with your content? And we're going to get into types of content and best practices in a little bit, but I think it's important that we start at the top and really just flesh out a little bit what each one of our goals are in content. Yeah. Content. So, yeah, for me, the, the, um, high level goal is really about brand recognition. So if I think about the blockchain business that we're building, we really want to be synonymous for clients and, and candidates around blockchain recruitment. So part of it is about visibility. It's, it's about, um, you know, really creating that familiarity within the brand. And I, I, I think on the back of that, we try not to, um, really put KPIs in the business in terms of outcomes, because I really do think it promotes quite transactional thinking, which is the opposite of, of what we want. Um, but the, the key thing for me is around consistency. So I show up as in terms of personal content every single day. And, uh, and, and so it, that's, that's kind of the key thing is what are we putting out and how does it add value? And are we being consistent as a business? I love it. And, and, and Marcus, you are not a recruiter by trade. So talk to us, right? Correct. Talk to us a little bit around what content means to you. How do you define it? And what are some of those KPIs and uh, high level strategic goals? Yeah. So, and just to provide a little bit of context. So the majority of my career has been on the sales side, then into product and then into recruiting. So I've done all facets of it. Um, but leading a business is Slightly, slightly different. Um, and for me, content, we, we build communities for companies to help them really engage, as I mentioned, with talent and clients and our companies called EQ Community. So as Jeanette said, community is super important to us. But as far as content, I think content is about really providing people with some insights and also value that will allow them to take some kind of action. That's how, that's what I think about when I see content and hopefully that's a positive action and helping people to think differently or doing something different. I think if we continue continuously pro provide value, the KPI that we've seen, and this was why we had the community was generating referrals. People come back in and they say, Hey, we saw what you were doing. Um, I know someone that does this, this and this, whether that's a client or a candidate. And we have a real process around building that in for ourselves and also for other companies. I dig it, man. Joel. Well, what's interesting yeah. about Joe, Joel is, I mean, Joel is also, you know, when I, when I talk about Joel, he's a multifaceted uh, content creator and he's doing it specifically for his company, Hirewell, and he's brought some best practices in there. Talk to us a little bit about the strategy that you're, yourself personally and also from a company perspective as far as recruitment marketing. Yeah, I think I, I love what Jeanette said about the community aspect because I think that's what content allows you to do, right? It allows you to scale like one-on-one -on -one interactions you could be having to just a broader group of people. So obviously you can't have 100 conversation, phone conversations um, in an hour, but you can have 100 micro conversations with people through comments, right? So it's not as in-depth as a conversation, uh, but there's still a level of connection there. So I think I view content as that building community, but then also building awareness, bringing value, and then also bringing entertainment, which is I think Probably the angle that I've seen the most is like c connecting with people, entertaining them, and uh, you know, I'm providing value that way. So I think there's a lot of different approaches that you can take 
with content. I think uh, you've got to know. I think you've got to know what your persona is as well. I think there's different personas online that people can can take. For example, I'm not going to come out there as a thought leading CEO if I'm not a thought leading CEO. But there's there can be different voices that are equally as valuable. So yeah, I think it's it's realizing who that who you are and kind of who you want to be, um, and then like Jeanette said as well, like showing up consistently and authentically and making sure that what you're communicating online is the same as, as what you're going to have offline as well. So if you have a one-on-one -on -one conversation critical. with people. That's, yeah. that's critically important too. And last but not least, uh, Scott McGregor, and you certainly have a great presence on LinkedIn. Uh, you've been at the game for a while. You've been there, done that, seen everything. Uh, also facilitating, uh, curating amazing people through your standing O series over there. Talk to us a little bit about your strategy when it comes to content creation uh, across multiple channels. And we'll dig in with the next round of questions on sure. specific channels. We'll hammer it down a bit. Um, so, I, I, you know, to piggyback on what Joel said, I think of content as just communication at scale. Um, and so our content strategy is twofold. It's to be known to be recognized, to be visible, but it's also to be known for something. And in our case, it's people over everything, which is behind me, it's on my hat, it's kind of who we are. Um, so the goal is really exposure and impact. Uh, we don't necessarily track KPIs on it. Right, KPIs are relationships. In my world, it's relationships and conversations leading yep. to new business, leading to candidate introductions. So let's talk about content here. I mean, the low hanging fruit is LinkedIn, right? Everyone thinks recruiters are going to be on LinkedIn. And each one of us has a presence on LinkedIn. Every one of us has a different strategy. For example, I have the podcast and I created the podcast to showcase amazing people in my network who happen to be thought leaders in various industries across HR, talent acquisition, uh, entrepreneurship, and I get to showcase their journey. So my approach is I shine a light on others and that light reflects back on me and it allows me to share my point of view and thought leadership. So that's one of the approaches I take. I also like to infuse some hot takes here and there, inf infuse some sarcasm and humor. If, if anyone uh, follows any of my content, they get that there. So let's talk about, we'll talk about LinkedIn for a moment and talk about different um, approaches. And, and I have to start with Joel with, with, with LinkedIn, who has built an incredible audience and one of the things that I admire about Joel is, yes, he built a big audience with the memes. He brought them into his world. And I think that was the top of the funnel strategy that worked well. But Joel has some incredible, really insightful content on some of your long form stuff. So talk to us a little bit about uh, the keys to your uh, LinkedIn uh, success kingdom. Yeah, I think it's it's evolved, right? Like I started creating content three and a half years ago on the platform. And if you had looked at my content back then, I was pretty much just copying what I saw everybody else posting, which is kind of like inspiration, vulnerability stories, definitely uh, got really caught up in, in the vanity game. But I think as time has gone by, it, it, again, it's going back to that heart of like, what is content? It's connecting with people. So for me in recruiting, I look at, it, I look at recruiters, that's who I want to build an audience with. There's a lot of humor. We go through a lot of situations we can all relate to. So I've tried to make my content as relatable as possible. Um, and so, yeah, but on the flip side too, I've got a live show that I do every week on LinkedIn where I'm interviewing, you know, talent leaders, people at startups who are running recruitment teams. And, and I think that approach has helped me just build relationships and, and, you know, also learn a lot. So again, it's multifaceted. It's like relatable content, relationship content, and then, uh, you know, being able to have some more of that long form content with the live show and, um, uh, you know, just a great learning experience for me, honestly. Yeah, and absolutely, absolutely love that approach there too. Um, and we'll get back to TikTok in a minute here, but Jeanette has an incredible uh, LinkedIn presence as well. Jeanette, what's, what's, what's your approach? What's your style? What has worked? What hasn't worked? Let's talk a little bit about your, your approach on LinkedIn and other platforms as well. Yeah, so I'll be honest with you. So quite some time ago, um, when I first started to build an audience on LinkedIn, um, there's so so much to do on LinkedIn that I made quite a conscious decision that I was going to really go quite deep on one platform rather than kind of spreading myself thin over over a number of them. Right. So that there's uh, there's definitely something to be said for if you're going to do it, if you're going to do something, do it right. And so. Um, 
um, my my hope is is to to kind of move to to other um, platforms and and see where there's crossover in terms of that audience. But the thing that I put 110 percent into is is LinkedIn, and my strategy around LinkedIn is very much a um, kind of a bit of a content cocktail. So I think it's really about thinking about the different types of, of um, posts. Um, so is, you know, you want to leave people feeling inspired, you want to educate people, you want to, um, right. you know, inform people and, and really have quite, um, you know, really bring a blend of, of those different approaches. So I do a lot around um, image posts, blogs. Um, I love the LinkedIn newsletters, I think is is great for kind of building a really engaged audience. Um, and then I, I kind of took the approach around things <laughs> like pod, around podcasts where I would, um, I've guested on a lot of other people's um, podcasts, which I think um, is perhaps Remember. a little, which I think is kind of a bit of an under underutilized um, strategy, right? Because you're tapping into it's arbitrage. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. So, um, yeah, so I'd, I'd say that's that's uh, that sums it up. I, I love it. Everyone has a little bit different style of approach. Now, Marcus, talk to us a little bit about the the work that you do, creating content for your own personal brand as well for your company as well. Yeah, so I think uh, a lot of the content that I started creating was in in person content. So I spoke on stage a fair amount um, at different conferences, and then always used to say, "Hey, like, can I get a recording?" Of course. And so once I got the recording, then I was able to then use that, start to chop that up and then redistribute it. So that was like what one part of it. Um, and then around our community itself, where EQ community was focused on diversity recruiting initially, um, we would look at the passions and the interests for those individuals. And so let's say, I don't know, you're in, you're in, you're in a technical role, uh, a software development role. We didn't focus on that per se or your job. We focused on crypto or something that was adjacent um, but also orthogonal in a certain way where you could interact with that. So it was about bringing the passions and interests around candidates and letting them start the conversation. So there's kind of two strategies from my personal standpoint, anything I speak on, try and get the content, chop it up, redistribute the best bits. And then for the audience, figure out what their passions and interests are and then help them really kind of bring the best out of themselves instead of feeling like they've got to be in a uniform every, every day. Yeah, I love it. And, and I think the common thread here is, is audience engagement at different levels. There's certain forms of content that are less engaging, certain forms are more engaging, depending on how you position it. Scott, talk to us a little bit about, uh, you know, your, uh, your preferred platform and some of your best practices. Yeah, definitely LinkedIn. Uh, you know, I think of it as an opportunity to soften the beachhead, to turn uh, relationships into friendships. Um, that's where we met. We all met. Yeah, a hundred percent. The content strategy is is keep it real. Uh, I think that's what works best. Uh, have an opinion. Give a slice of life. I mean, I always refer back when people are struggling with content. I always tell them think about the most popular TV show maybe in television history was Seinfeld. Seinfeld was a show built around nothing. It was really built around just a slice of life. And that's really what drew a huge audience in. And I think that's what brings a big audience in uh, as well using a, a platform like LinkedIn. So it's just uh, showing them the sausage making, uh, showing them those real yeah. true slices of life. Well, I think it's interesting too. We're talking a lot about how we put our own brand out there and our and our company's brand out there. But let's talk about top of funnel for those of us that are in the trenches with day to day recruiting. A couple of us on here right now. Um, how do you use LinkedIn specifically or other forms of content, whether it be Instagram, Twitter, uh, TikTok, for candidate uh, attraction? I want to start with Joel on this one. If you could talk for a minute, how has link how is how has TikTok helped you with some with uh, with your own brand and candidate attraction? Look, TikTok is. Without a doubt, I mean, I go viral on LinkedIn a, a lot too, but TikTok, like its algorithm is extremely powerful. So I think if you can, I think it, with candid content, I always look at it, it's like, you gotta be relatable to candidates, all right? Like with clients, you gotta provide value because no one's gonna wanna work. You can be relatable as you want, but if you're not providing value, clients aren't gonna work with you. But um, candidates, you know, they're attracted to relatable 
content. So like humor, something different. Like if you want to show your company culture, you know, we've all seen the career videos after, you know, career video after career video. But if you add some humor in there, you show a slice of like humanity and authenticity it goes a long way. So I think for me, like TikTok, number one, you've got to get this idea out of your head that it's like just kids dancing. Like it's really oh, no. not like I, I think it used to be like that in 2019 when I originally started. But it's just transition user base of my audience. It's like 25 to, you know, whatever, 44. That's 90 percent of the, the people who view my content. And so. Yeah, it's been just amazingly powerful. What I would would say about TikTok is I think you got to experiment. You got to figure out like what resonates with people. But that's the same with LinkedIn as well, right? Like with any content, you've kind of got to have that balance of being yourself, putting a message out, and then kind of figuring out what resonates with the audience and then starting to build off of that. So it just takes some time, but uh yeah, it's I mean it's powerful. Like just to give some context too, like LinkedIn I think about 170,000 followers and my profile views over 90 days, it's like 70,000 views. TikTok in 60 days, I get 330,000 profile views. So it's just, a, it's just. A but it, but is it the right audience? Account. So that's a question though. Is it the right well, targeted audience, right? Because your followers per se are within your, your bullseye or within your range. Are they the same? Is it the same value, right? Are those targets the same well, value? I mean, it's like, it's like, you know, in recruitment, if you put up a job ad, it's every single person that applies to the job and, a, you know, like a, a top applicant, like, no, That's a but job. the top applicants can be within that. So do I have like the exact analytics of who's checking out TikTok? No, but I can say that like it directly is impact LinkedIn because I got a link tree so I can see who's coming from TikTok by just right. request. And it's, you know, it's, it's a mixed bag. <laughs> it's not hundred percent dialed in, but. I think that works works and you've got to just keep on dialing everything. Right. Like we, and you know that with content, right. it's dialing, it's learning. You got to close the aperture. You got to exactly. try it out. Today. Hey there, fellow podcast listeners. I'm Kevin Logan Jr. Host of the immutable mindset podcast. If you're fascinated by web three blockchain and disruptive technology, then you won't want to miss a show. Join me and co-host Adam Posner as we introduce you to an incredible lineup of successful entrepreneurs, builders, and industry veterans who share their insider knowledge, unique perspectives, and personal stories that will leave you inspired and crave you more. Like Mike Isogawa, the CEO of Webacy, who shares her journey from being a Cirque du Soleil performer to a cybersecurity pioneer. Or Dave Schwed, COO of Halborn, who discusses the future of digital asset security and how the future of assets will be tokenized. We also break down complex topics into digestible bits, perfect for both experts and newcomers to the world of Web3. So if you're ready to stay ahead of the curve, subscribe to the Immutable Mindset Podcast now, wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. I want Jeanette to have a, an opportunity here to speak. Uh, from a candidate attraction standpoint, what have you found to be the most useful and valuable channels and approaches, specifically uh, for candidate? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I actually just wanted to add something sure. um, to the TikTok discussion, although um, it's not a platform that I've uh, I've dived into. I've done quite a lot of, um, of research around how it can be useful within recruitment. And the couple of takeaways that, um, you know, came came from that for me were, number one, to really actually focus in on quite a tight niche within TikTok beca because the platform itself um, is going out of its way to find an audience for you, which I think is quite, uh, you know, is very different in, in terms of the algorithm for TikTok than any of the other platforms. So I'm definitely going to be tapping you up on on um, your strategy, Joel. It sounds it sounds awesome, but um, I, I think that'll definitely be be something that I'll be be kind of keeping in mind to make sure that the the work kind of uh, goes in in the right place for me. Um, to, to your um, question, Adam, I, I think for me, I, I think about my strategy with candidate engagement on LinkedIn being around character. Um, I think about who, who would I want to entrust one of the most important decisions of my life with, right, which is my career. And if you think about one of the things that um, reputationally we're constantly having to come up against as, as recruiters is around our integrity and our mm -hmm. professionalism and how we're Always defending it. Yeah, how we're going to treat people. So aside from adding value, I really do, you know, with, with um, you know, informative um, content, I really think about, I want to, 
people to know who they're working with. And so even if it's not directly relevant um, to the, uh, the job search, I want people to know from a character point of view, this is the type of person that I want to work with. And that's actually really helped me massively from a referral standpoint. I mean, I think 50 you're a magnet. 50% of my business client and candidate just comes from LinkedIn for me. Um, and, uh, and that, and that's just, uh, I think a big piece of that is just showing, showing who you are. Well, let's talk about this for a moment here. And I want to point this convert this part to Scott, cause I think he really is a champion in this area. You know, the, the reason that most folks give recruiters a bad rap and, and lump us in with the, you know, used car salesman of the world is, is cause there's a lot of bad recruiters out there that give us good ones here or in the industry a bad name. And that's a real problem. And I think Scott McGregor is an absolute champion at highlighting uh, not just recruiters, but people in general, amazing people. But when it comes to recruitment, Scott's a legend has been in the game a long time. Um, Scott, what, what can we do? What are you doing? I mean, I don't know if it's a direct uh, strategy, but to show the good side of our industry and what we do with the good ones like us do well. How do you highlight them? Yeah, I mean, I started my company because I thought recruiting was pretty broken. You know, I was a CRO and uh, dealing with recruiters was not one of my favorite things to do. So, you know, I'm painting with a super broad brush. Obviously, this group and so many other wonderful people out there. Um, but it is a industry with a super low barrier to entry um, that can create a lot of, uh, you know, bad practices. Um, I just really try to build credibility and trust. And I know that if I have a tremendous amount of credibility and trust, and that's, you know, based on the people that they see me interacting with, the quality of those people, um, you know, the people that are engaging with my content, uh, the way maybe I'm supporting other people, that that credibility and trust is going to draw a lot of people uh, to us. And then when they have the experience uh, and they understand that we're never trying to put a square peg in a round hole, we're always just looking for alignment. Um, to me, that's the only thing I tell candidates all the time. We only care about alignment. That's it. Yeah, that's 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 really well said. And and Marcus, don't worry, I didn't I didn't forget about you up on uh, the top left of Hollywood Squares over here. Um, your your thoughts on you know what formats are just crushing it for you guys? And let's talk. I mean, and 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 let's talk about email too. If email is a good format for you too, email is content marketing. It absolutely is. And and I use email marketing to kind of um uh, curate all my different channels into one to my list. It's targeted. It's opt in. I've I've really actually put a lot of effort into it. Talk to us a little bit about um some of the things tactically. Uh, and from an execution standpoint, that are working. Let's pull up the. Let's lift up the hood. Yeah, the the I would say the most successful kind of pieces of content that we generate and created have come from peer to peer interactions. So hosting mini roundtables. So it's a bit of a lift, but once you get some peers um, that are talking about a topic like this conversation, as an example, and you can then take the best bits out and then reuse that and leverage that. That's been key for us, and especially looking at video format as a baseline. So I think before it was like, oh, do you want to create a blog? And then you've got to start from scratch when you're creating a blog. And then it's like, well, now you can start and create a video with all the tools that there are within AI. You can download so many every part of it, tools. the audio. Yeah, use it for audio. You can use it for, obviously, the, the, the live video, but then also summarize that as well. So the things that we've been doing is hosting a lot of consistent events that we think people will be interested in and being part of. And even like, so you've had worst case scenario, even if two, three people show up, you have a conversation with two or three people, you can leverage that content and use that. And then, content and pyramid. Then leverage it. So, yeah. So it's just, it's all about conversations, authentic conversations that drive engagement around some, I think topics that you have an indication that people are interested in at least. And then you start to build your audience from there. That's what's really started to work for us. I love it. And I think everyone needs to understand the content pyramid because that really kind of defines everything that we do here. Take this show. We're going to get the recording for it. I'm going to turn it into a podcast. I'm going to turn it into individual pieces of content. I'm going to share it with my panel here. Each one of them are going to share it out. They're going to connect the candidately. It's going to spread the word about them. It's going to reflect back on us. And you could turn key notes, key phrases out of that into tweets, Instagram. There's a million different things um, you could do here. Scott, you're a, a big proponent of, of email marketing. I get it as part of the outlier project and you, I assume you do for your own uh, business side as well there too. Talk to us a little bit about some of the successes 
um, with email marketing and maybe a couple things that folks have to look out for that have been, um, uh, you know, fail traps. Yeah, I mean, we don't, we actually don't do a ton of, of email marketing. We've never sent out any mass emails. I mean, we do to uh, people that are in the outlier project, but we're really not uh, for something new, which is my recruiting firm. We really don't use it at all. Um, so as a matter of fact, we've never sent a mass email, never made a cold call in eight years um, in, in terms of to clients. Uh, do we do that with candidates? Absolutely. I mean, we're calling and emailing candidates all the That's time, business. not, not, not in mass. Uh, so, uh, all, all of that. I mean, we like to do things in kind of an offbeat nature. Uh, we, we do things that seem unscalable, uh, and, and that works for us. Uh, so anything that is unscalable that I know other people are either going to go, that's stupid or that won't work or I can't scale it. That's probably what I'm going to try to do. That's tremendous. So let's talk a little bit about what hasn't worked on and, and trial and error and, and trying different things. I, I know I'm, I'm struggling on, on Instagram. I'm trying to make things work there. I'm putting more effort into TikTok. I've um, uh, hired my 10 year old daughter to be my TikToker creator in chief. She's absolutely incredible at it and starting to see that. But it's important for us to experiment and try different channels. And I'm kind of with Jeanette too. I've kind of doubled down on, on LinkedIn and focus on that. Um, Marcus, talk to us a little bit about something that hasn't worked for you, personal brand or for the or for the organization. Yeah, you, you're going to need a whole show. But uh, <laughs> um, I'll try. Uh, pick, we, pick, we, pick the worst. Yeah, we, yeah. yeah. Uh, the, the worst, I mean. Skywriting. Skywriting is was... not a good method of content creation. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Do you know what? I, I'm going to tell you, say two real things that probably people are going to start trying that they can try, but they're going to get bad results. Um, one is just sharing links, link sharing. That is not valuable mm. without any perspective, right? So I think a lot of you could share links across your company and to other companies so people could see an article, but without any perspective, or any view on that, it doesn't add any value. I think what we're gonna to start to see the rise of is people using a lot of the AI tools and then creating some content and then just posting it. That What you're gonna see is that there's gonna be a whole bunch of fake news and inauthenticity right. just flooding the zone. But I do think there's significant value in it if you use it right. So if you know your domain and you know an area and you need it to, it's like how people use Grammarly, you need it to kind of touch things up. I think there's huge Love value Grammarly. in that. So yeah, th those are just some of the things I'd say. Just don't link share for the sake of link sharing. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't work. And and side note on Grammarly, Grammarly's been a, a game changer for me. But there's a really cool part about Grammarly, not just the 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 grammar part of it, but there's also a sediment tone indicator. So if you want to come across more confident, more friendly, more optimistic, it, it, it tells you that, and you get great reports in that. And it's really helped me. I'm a horrific, horrific speller, and and this has been a, an, a complete game changer. Jeanette, what um. What hasn't worked for you? Um, so I'd say trying to do it all. So, um, you know, I, I think it's one thing to do the, to if you're active and engaged um, around your personal channels, to then manage the uh, business channels as well on top of mm. that. Um, it just becomes very unmanageable. And, um, you know, for, for a while I went from, you know, being an executive at this huge company to then being in startup mode. And, uh, you know, so so you sort of really evaluate the cost of everything um but you know you, you there's there's definitely um a great roi in, in terms of engaging someone consistently around the brand channels um so so kind of uh, figure figuring that piece out and then i would kind of i did a few other things around engaging on things like linkedin live and um as great as they were because you had to constantly integrate the external um tools mm -hmm. it just took it just took um too long Agree. um and so i think it's a game changer when you now see that linkedin is integrating um a lot more stuff um you know native with the the tool right so you don't, we don't have to be connecting to um all these different kind of third party systems for even things like scheduling um so so i see that as a really big improvement but up until this point it, it was a real time suck and I do especially when it's you know we're all here talking about content it's not our 
day job, right? Like we actually then have a no, whole it, other No, it becomes of, a day job quickly if you don't yeah. let it get away from you. And that's why you have to outsource when you can exactly. for certain things. Exactly. In, interesting. Um, Scott, I want, I'm going to give you a minute to think about this one. I want to talk about the, the, the use of a, publishing a book as a content tool. I'm going to give you a second to think about that. But Joel, what hasn't worked for you? Honestly, Joel, what hasn't worked for you? This dude goes on, on TikTok and within a month he's crushing it. What hasn't worked for you? <laughs> It's been like four years. Twitter, like Twitter. Like, do you suck at Twitter? Like, where, where are you? <laughs> no, look, I, I think, you know, I spent, I spent the whole of what 2021, like coaching recruitment teams on how they could build personal brands. So That's your bread and butter, man. Yeah. And it's like, honestly, I, I'll say like what I've seen, like just not work for, for other people. And it's really simple. Like people just give up really quickly. And I think like, it's the same with anything, right? Like you start a business, 90% of businesses fail. You start in recruitment, a bunch of recruiters fail. It's consistency and being able to w work through the tough times. And with content, the tough times are you're not getting the reaction. You feel like you're spinning the wheels. You feel like you feel like nobody's listening. But you really have to stick in there for a long – like content is not an easy fix or an easy solution to business development. It's the lo – like the easy fix is picking up the phone and – calling somebody yeah. like cold calling is a quicker fix than creating content so i just think like having that long-term view that's the biggest mistake people make it's not about one post you literally just have to commit to this is a part of my business development this is a part of my career development building a brand is just something we're going to do and to be honest with you on um, social media is not going away if, if you're still convincing yourself that you need to be doing content or a personal brand matters at this point you know, I, I think you're pretty far behind. So you just got to commit to it, show up every day, right? I mean, simple as that. I dig it. Let's talk about the long form. Let's talk about that hard covered, hard copy book behind you, Scott McGregor. Uh, <laughs> how, how does that how does that fit into the puzzle of the entire content strategy for um, your brand and your company? Yeah, so it, it originally wasn't a part of a content strategy. It was a part of... Uh, a, a need to give back. So I wanted to give back, uh, but I was bootstrapping my company. So I thought, how am I going to do that? Uh, I can't write checks. What's, what are my assets? My assets were this crazy eclectic network of amazing human beings that I've befriended over decades. And I thought, why don't I ask them to write a chapter of gratitude uh, for a life lesson learned? I'll put it in a book and I'll give all the money to charity. Um, so I've done that four times. The fifth book will be out this year. And everybody on this call has been in one of those books, except for Marcus. So my man, Marcus, this is your invite to be in standing out honor that will awesome. come out this year. Um, it, it has turned out to be a great, uh, a great way to build, I think, uh, credibility, certainly, because people have seen the 200 contributing authors. So they've seen you, Adam and Joel and Jeanette, and they're like, wow, the people that are in these books just lends credibility to who you are. Um, and certainly the fact that it is a give back uh, because 100 of the percent of the proceeds go to charity. Um, I think that shines another light on our organization that's maybe a little bit different. So it's been while very, very labor intensive, uh, and probably expensive. Uh, it, it's been a phenomenal tool for us um, on, on a number of different levels. That's tremendous here. So let's bring it home here with, with the last question. I want to give everyone an opportunity. Well, second to last question here. Um, Marcus, you have an eye on, on the future, the eye on the horizon. I mean, what are some of what are a couple of those trends, maybe technologies, tools, platforms that, that, that folks uh, should try or, or keep an eye on? Yeah, so just to start with trends, I think high level AI, um, as far as leveraging content is here, it's happening and there's a lot Don't of opportunity. How you use that is going to be key. So the prompts, you're going to see roles that are going to come up, like people creating prompts as a job. Right. And chief also, officer. yeah, chief prompt C officer. C3PO. That, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> I, I think that's it. key. So I'm understanding how to leverage that and then for, for for me, I'm super biased on community. Um, I think that people are going to want more um, specific content. At the start of the year, I decided to go on a diet, um, and a diet that I went on was an information diet. 
And so I want to make sure that I'm part of people's meals, supplement, the audience that we're targeting to make sure that we're part of their veg, their meat and what they're choosing. So I think thinking about what value you're providing to that audience is going to be key. Love so it. those are the those are the two areas. Joel. I, yeah, I mean, I think video, con- short form video content, right? And I think also um, kind of like influencer marketing within recruitment. I think that's something that people are going to get a lot more interested in, like big brands working with notable people in order to get their name out there. Um, Hope so. Yeah. Yeah. Jeanette? Um, yeah, so something that Joel said really resonated with me around, um, you know, if if recruitment companies are just starting to think about this now, so behind the curve and, uh, and, and you know, sort of uh, got to embrace the basics because I actually really think with um, the emergence of Web3, um, the this is going to look totally different um you know so so the, the the fundamental shift to people beginning to own their data i think over the the next few years um what that's going to mean and and essentially kind of taking a lot of power away from the big platforms so we're talking right now about um building this uh, these audiences we're building on rented land right because I was any- say, you don't own the platform you don't own your audience on it take it offline Completely. You step it, you take a step out of line and, um, you know, your, your band, shadow band or, you know, and, and, and suddenly you've lost that whole stream. So I personally think it's super exciting for, for everyone who's engaged in content to start to think about, um, you know, the, the, the dynamics and, and, and what that's going to mean for, for all of us who are super engaged in building community. Um, because, um, you know, so, pretty soon we'll have a lot more control over how that evolves. Fantastic. And and Scott, what are you seeing out there? What's 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 I mean everybody's interest? talking about, you know, chat GPT uh and and how that is gonna change the world. Uh, I think it's fascinating. Um and while I am a believer in AI in that capacity, uh, you know, I think authenticity is still gonna win at the end of the day. Um, you know, so, uh, you know, I, I'm not a big futurist. Um, I kind of just stay in my lane right now, what seems to be working. Uh, and, and I don't think too much, uh, in, into the future. Although, you know, I, I leave that to a lot smarter people than myself. I love it. Well, I want to thank everyone on the panel for joining us. We're going to go around the horn and uh, tell everyone where they could find you, where they could connect with you, and where they could learn more. And we will start with ladies first. Jeanette, thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate your insights and uh, getting to know you a little bit better. Where can folks find you? Uh, yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me. I've really enjoyed it. Um, find me on LinkedIn. You know, you can find me on lots of other uh, channels, but for, if you want to actually find me, I'm on LinkedIn. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Marcus Sawyer. You can find me on eq.app, eq app. Um, And if you want to build your own community and take some of those followers from LinkedIn, um, I'm here to help. Mr. Joel Lalji. I would say LinkedIn, Twitter, and TikTok. But if you just Google me, I'm the only Joel Lalji there is. So you could also see my old MySpace, you know. Go check out my MySpace. The little fun note, little fun note, a couple of years ago, I connected with Aussie Adam Posner and we actually formed a friendship. I've had him on my show. He does loyalty marketing. We chat at least once a quarter and we actually formed a friendship off of LinkedIn having the same name. It's it's fascinating. Scott McGregor, bring us home. Where can folks find you and connect and learn more? Oh, Joel ruined it for me. I was going to say MySpace Clubhouse. You know, I was going to bring up all this, all this stuff. Now, LinkedIn is the place to find Don't me. go to his OnlyFans. Do not check out Scott's OnlyFans. He's been yes. hard for a long Stay time. Away. Trust me. There's no, not there's no recruiter hard. marketing on OnlyFans, everybody. I was going to get to it, but I crossed it off my list. I'm not going to wow. go there. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, awesome. I want to thank everyone. I want to thank Candidate, uh, Candidate Lee for, for hosting us. My name is Adam Poser. You can find me on LinkedIn, Adam J. Posner, because if not, you go to Aussie Adam, and you can find out the podcast at thepodcast.com. I want to thank everyone who's joined us online, everyone who's going to watch us on the replays, and uh, I hope you learned a thing or two. Take care, everybody. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Wisdom is forever, but for us, it's time to go. Thank you for joining us. Luckily, we'll be back with our next episode soon, jam-packed with more incredible humans. 
Thank you for listening, subscribing, and sharing. To join the conversation, search The Pausecast on LinkedIn. And to catch up on past episodes and more info, please visit www.thepausecast.com.